Agenda item number 12, comments from commissioners. Commissioner Holden Rose. Sir, let me address several things. Uh, first off, my alleged slur against Italians. And my mother's name is Dazzalina Benedetti. I'm half WAP. And for those of you who are going to get upset over the term WAP, how many reasons? Let me see hands. Do you know what WAP means? No. When my relatives came over, they had no papers. Without papers? Huh? Stunata? <laughs> Careful. I use the term Goomba and Goombatis. They are part and parcel of Italian communities. I grew up with them. No apology. Unions. I talked about the Teamsters Union. As I mentioned, I'm the only commissioner who's been a member of the union. Commissioner Heil? Yes. Teamsters. Oh, heavens. Commissioner Heil? Yes. Cheers. <laughs> I simply relate my experience as a member of the Teamsters Union. No apologies. Education. The Bernalillo Public Schools are in horrible shape, grade wise. The young lady back there is shaking her head. The report card looks like a B, C, D, and a bunch of Fs. I would ask you as a rhetorical question, what have you done in the last week to improve education in EPS. No apologies. I'm not finished. Sir. No one wants to hear you do it. Science standards. So we used the last week. Let's have a word, folks. Go ahead, Commissioner. I'd like to read a letter that I wrote to my fellow commissioners. Gentlemen, I am writing to you to express my thoughts on the proposed oil and gas ordinance that we are about to vote on. Arguably, there is no more important issue that the county commissioners will address in the future. Whatever the decision of the commissioners on the oil and gas ordinance, it will determine the atmosphere and state of mind of the citizens of the county for years to come. Therefore, each of the commissioners is obligated to think deeply and weigh all the factors for and against the creation and substance of such an ordinance. I know that if each of us has agonized over what should be done to turn out the best ordinance to accomplish two goals. One, to craft a document that represents the will of the people of Sandoval County as to regulating new oil and gas wells and in accomplishing the foregoing to do so in such a manner that the document is not so draconian as to cause potential oil and gas companies not to look at Sandoval County as a place to do business. And to let it be known that the county is seeking new business in order to create a climate in which positive economic growth will take place. In seeking to make my decision, in my case, I turn to the Constitution of the United States, hoping to glean from the magnificent document the wisdom with which to determine how I would vote. I was once again taken by the opening words of the preamble, we the people. The Sandoval County Commission an arm of representative government whose charter is to represent the will of the people of Sandoval County has an obligation to listen to the voice of we the people. To me, this very, 
very clearly translates into the requirement that the oil and gas ordinance be one of special use. The Sandoval County Commissioners are ultimately responsible for any and all decisions and actions that they take. They cannot delegate their responsibility in giving up their authority by handing off to a lesser non-elective office through the use of permissive use, oil and gas ordinance, the commission is still responsible for any and all actions, good or adverse, taken in the future. To abrogate that responsibility by giving away authority is clearly not in keeping with the oath of office that each of us swore to uphold. The preamble speaks further to the promotion of the general welfare. To me, this translates very clearly to the requirement that a company interested in applying for a permit to drill in for oil and gas within Sandoval County must submit a statement showing their financial stability. This is simply common sense and certainly should not be viewed as an onerous requirement. Lastly, I am reminded that one comes out of combat with certain memories that are long lasting. Mine is water. As a reconnaissance marine, water was a commodity as precious as life itself. Alone in enemy territory, each of my teams carried six to eight canteens of water. We lived on that water in the can those canteens. When they ran out, there was little chance of a refill. During the dry season, after two days without water, one's muscles began to cramp. On day three without water, reflexes became impaired. You slowed down to a crawl, yet you had to pass on, press on to make that LZ an extraction. Perhaps my obsession about water is best described in a quote from Charles Anderson's book, The Grunts. Upon returning to base at an endless supply of water, the real beauty of this formerly small and simple act of drinking water was that it could be done with the realization that one was not limited to a capful and would not have to be squirted back into a hot canteen. You could take a whole damn mouthful and then you could either swallow it all at once or you could play with it as long as you wanted. You actually had a choice for a change. Gargle it, squirt it around inside your mouth. Let each tooth and taste bud savor it. Hell, you could almost have a damn orgasm right there on a mouthful of water. Water in New Mexico is precious. We must protect it. The Sandoval County Oil and Gas Ordinance, as it stands, must have a provision in it to ensure well monitoring to protect our water. At present, groundwater protection monitoring is a responsibility of the state of New Mexico, New Mexico Energy, Minerals and Natural Resources Department, New Mexico Environmental Department, and the EPA. The effectiveness of these agencies is questionable. I believe that we could quickly and effectively assemble a regional collective well monitoring system that would provide us with constant knowledge of the condition of our aquifer. I believe further that we could work hand in hand with oil and gas companies to ensure the safety of our precious water. The issue is not mutually exclusive. Any ONG company worth its salt is going to do its best to ensure that their operation is safe and efficient. Without the addition of these three foregoing requirements to the present ordinance, I cannot, I will not vote for the proposed ordinance as it stands. One last point. To date, this oil and gas thing has been adversarial, confrontational, and I don't understand why. Mr. Chairman, I would like to make a recommendation that we have two people from oil and gas, two people from planning and zoning, two people from citizens group get together and hash out a reasonable document. 
Thank you. All right, thank you, Commissioner Holman Rose. Commissioner Hunt or Commissioner Block? Who wants to go next? I'll go. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. You know, we had these comments last week, and uh, I was and, and, and I was offended last week, and, and I'm still bothered by them. Uh, Commissioner Holman Rose, uh, for not apologizing for those remarks, I, I find uh, disturbing. So I will apologize once again, as I did last week. And I grew up in Manchester, New Hampshire. There's a lot of Italians there. Uh, one of my Italian friends growing up was a guy named Tony Muscarillo. Great guy, loved him. I uh, worked with a, an Italian at my firm, John DiVincenzo, fantastic guy. I have a very good friend here, Chris Belzano, great guy, uh, who is an Italian immigrant, by the way, and went to University of Mexico. I served, as you did, Commissioner Holden Rhodes, with some incredible Italian Americans who loved their country. 29 of them were Medal of Honor recipients, two recently in Afghanistan, Jared Monti and Salvador Guenta. Teachers. I, I don't remember the uh, young woman's name back there, but she was up here and she said, um, and I don't, I'm paraphrasing, so if I get your words wrong, I apologize. You talked about, we, we, don't, we don't know you or, or people like you, and you're shaking your head yes. Uh, I, I, I do know people like you, and I respect the hell out of people like you and what you do every day. Um, I have a teacher in my family. My kids go to Rio Rancho Public High School. And when it comes to the comments related to Bernalillo, uh, the Bernalillo public school system, you can't just whitewash this with looking at the performance of schools because there's so many variables that go into a school. Number one, Bernalillo is a, is a poor town. New Mexico is a poor state. We have the highest child poverty. We have kids that go to school, Commissioner Older Rose, that are hungry and just can't learn. We have kids that go to school that have significant family issues, or maybe they don't have a mom or a dad. We have homeless students here in Sandoval County, and the Rio Rancho Observer is going to be doing an article on that. That affects students' performance. We have students who don't have their learning disabilities properly diagnosed yet. And to blame it on teachers and unions, I'm, I'm, I'm flabbergasted. Now, great, I'm a right to work person, but I still support the unions. And, and damn it, I, I support the teachers what they do because they're the person that spends most of the day with these kids. I've been influenced by many teachers and many coaches throughout my life whether it was back in New Hampshire or at North Dakota State, or even instructors in the Air Force I served with. So I, I would just ask you, Commissioner Holder, was to go back, take a look again, kind of just look at things from different sides. Put, your, put yourself in the teacher's shoes in the classroom every day and have to deal with so many issues where the kids come to school dirty, they come to school hungry, they come to school cold because maybe they don't have enough money for clothes. You can't judge a school system by just looking at the grades because there's so many layers of variables under there that affect a student's performance. So I apologize to you. And I apologize to the Italian Americans. Um, I don't know what else I to say. So, Okay, next thing. So I would like to discuss right to work. And here's where someone's probably going to get mad at me, but that's okay. We're still friends, and it's just a respectful disagreement. I would like to ask for the agenda for the next meeting to include a motion to publish the right to work ordinance. Then a vote will, will need to be taken to include it on the next agenda. And if there are three of us who will vote to uh, have this on the next agenda. We can get it on there for it. I think the next meeting is, is what, November 2nd? So 
Uh, Mr. Chairman, fellow commissioners, uh, county attorney, county manager, I would like to include a motion to publish the right to work ordinance. And again, lastly, I just want to, you know, the bookend thing of teacher, teacher, and just say thank you again for what you do. And I, I know what you do every day. I know about those lesson plans. Um, granted, my, my wife is a stay-at-home mom. She knows a lot more than I do <laughs> than, uh, about what you do. So thank you so much. And please pass that along to your other teachers. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I would like to uh, publish, um, have a motion to publish right for the Okay, we'll take that subject up. Uh, I'm going to allow all the commissioners to comment, and then we'll, we'll take that up at the end. Uh, Commissioner Eichel or Commissioner, Commissioner Eichel? I'll start uh, by basically uh, indicating uh, that there was a gentleman that came in here on the oil and gas issue. It said, shame on you because you commissioners are taking kickbacks. I really take offense to, to that. Uh, you know, we are here to serve the public and I don't see a, any one of these commissioners, you know, sitting in any oil and gas member's pocket. But yet they make these comments about, oh, you guys are in, in, the, in their back pockets. I'll tell you one thing, I've been in public office for over 30, almost 30 years. Not once have I taken a penny from people to fund my campaign. I did it out of my own pocket. So I'm not in anybody's pocket. I don't take kickbacks. I take offense for somebody that got to come in here and say that. Um, you know, when, when people come in here and, and indicate that, I don't want to listen to people like that. Period. I don't care if they're for oil and gas or they're against oil and gas. They have no business saying those things to us. That's my comment on that. The other issue is is the teachers. You know, uh, I was a teacher for uh, uh, nine years. I was a physical education teacher. I was a coach for more than nine years. Football coach, basketball coach, baseball coach. I dealt with kids pretty much all my life. Nobody works harder than teachers. I don't care what anybody says. Teachers give of their own money to fund students that don't have pencils, that don't have erasers, that don't have paper. You know, the state gives you $200 in a tax refund. Excuse me, but I think they spend that in about the first three weeks. So, you know, my, my wife is a teacher. She's been there for 30 years, and uh, nobody works harder than those people. Uh, so my, I, I applaud you, uh, you know, for, for doing the job that you do, because, um, you know, you go to school, you, you get your degree, and everybody dumps on them. The students, the administrators, other teachers, parents. It's amazing that we have these amazing people. So kudos to you people. I hope you guys uh, uh, accept it. I'm not offering an apology. I'm just telling you guys how, how it is and how I feel about you. Thank you. All right, thank you, Commissioner Eichel. Commissioner Hyde. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, first of all, I, I guess I'd like to echo uh, uh, Commissioner Eichwald's comment about being in the oil and gas pocket. Uh, you can check my uh, financial records with the state and won't find one penny uh, that came from the oil and gas industry. I won't belabor that any further. Because I'd like to talk about this Saturday at uh, Haynes Park, Rio Rancho's Acts of Kindness Day, which is sponsored by Rio Rancho Public Schools in collaboration with uh, the city of Rio Rancho. And the Kiwanis Club will be there with a booth uh, supporting Rio Rancho Public Schools um, in their endeavor. I also want to point out that being involved in the Kiwanis Club, we, we support teachers. Uh, we have, uh, we support, uh, let's see, uh, 
a key club at Cleveland High School, a key club at uh, Rio Rancho High School, and a builder's club at um, uh, Rio Rancho Middle School. Those are all to work with kids and teachers to encourage them to give back to their community. So come on out, noon to three o'clock, Haynes Park. Um, enjoy some <laughs> kindness, okay? Which we could use a lot of here. I also want to point out that um, one of the other things I do in life is still one or two home visits a week for St. Vincent de Paul to reach out to people that need help. And a lot of those involve kids and uh, in some cases, even teachers. So when the time comes around, and, um, uh, we get to uh, vote on uh, having uh, right to work on the November 2nd agenda. It's not because I don't like teachers. I just think there's some data that supports a moving in that direction. And I guess one last comment on the oil and gas. I think there's some things that need to change with regard to the oil and gas. Maybe not to the extent that uh, Commissioner Holden Rhodes uh, believes, but I think there are some things that we need to tweak uh, to protect the uh, more urban uh, part of our uh, community. And uh, maybe just a few other items that would make a better ordinance. Commissioner Heinle, thank you very much. Um, I don't really have much to say tonight. Um, it's a shame that we weren't able to um, vote on the enactment of the oil and gas ordinance. Uh, just for everybody's information, in case you didn't hear at the beginning of the meeting, um, that uh, agenda item has been delayed until our November 16th meeting. Um, in regards to right to work, um, all I need is a real quick consensus from the commission if they want to have it on the agenda for our November 2nd meeting. Uh, those are the rules and procedures that this board follows as far as getting things on the agenda. So if I could just have a, a vote by acclamation, I think that would be good. Gentlemen? I support uh, Commissioner Block's motion. Okay. Commissioner Eichel? Huh? Commissioner, hold on. Are you talking right to work? Or are you talking on own gas? Right to work, sir. Having it on the agenda. In favor. Okay. Do you want to vote? You don't have to. You oppose? <laughs> okay. So that's three. That'll carry it. Uh, so we'll have that on the agenda now. I, I didn't just Do you want to? Well, I thought your vote was good. <laughs> <laughs> I would still like to vote. Okay, go ahead. Is it three to one right now? Uh, it's, it's it's two to nothing right now. Uh, two to one. You're right. Two to one. Sorry, I forgot. Yeah. Baseball thing. No, uh, you're good. You uh, come? Yes. Yes, sir. Uh, okay. All right. So so just one thing about this particular agenda item. So there, the ordinance that you gentlemen have, this board has not reviewed that ordinance. So just. You know, I want you to understand that uh, we'll, we'll have it on the agenda for November the 2nd, but there may be some tweaks. Uh, so, I just wanted That's to get that. We, we will have a discussion. We, I think it'll be premature to publish until we have a, a, an ordinance that the board wants to put forth, right? Just like we, we've done with oil and gas. So, I, I know you two guys have an ordinance that uh, you want to run with, but the rest of us haven't weighed in on it. We haven't had any discussion about it, and this board will discuss it before we will publish an ordinance. So, okay. just so we're all on the same sheet, I want to make sure this is clear. Uh, looking at the county attorney here, so we do have an ordinance. You, you have it. You received it, correct? I have received it. Yes. Okay. So tell me the process now for us to actually have to vote to publish it. Um, do we all have to look at it and, and agree to it or make changes and come back together as a uh, commission in open forum? Correct, everybody would have to, the discussion would need to be in the open meeting regarding it. And if there's any changes, just like in oil and gas, those changes would have to be made in an open meeting. Okay, so if those changes to the, when do you need the ordinance by to have on the agenda by November 2nd? By when the agenda is due, which is 
correct. That would be this Tuesday. Okay, I believe you have the latest draft. I Is do. that correct? I do. I just want to verify with my partner over there, Commissioner Hyde, that she has the latest draft that we sent. Yes. So if, if that's the case, you could send that out to the other three commissioners for review. Is that correct? I can, yes. Okay. Um, Commissioner Hyde, do you have any questions? Well, it's just so that when November 2nd comes, that it's uh, something that can be discussed. And assuming that we um, support it as a, as a commission, then it can be posted. Okay. And I will send that out to all the commissioners as soon as possible. And if we don't support it, then it goes back for massage. So, can I assume then that when you send out the agenda here very shortly, and you get the changes, those those changes, if any, will be discussed at November 2nd, correct? You, as the commissioners, would have to discuss those changes at that meeting on the 2nd. They cannot be discussed via yeah. email. And if there's no changes, which probably not going to happen, but if there's no changes, then you could actually have a right, to, I'm sorry, a, uh, a vote to publish? That is possible, yes. Okay. I, do. I think the correct term is substantive changes. So so the draft, if, yeah, the, the, it will appear in your packet for the meeting on the second. Uh, if after your review you come to the meeting and you aren't going to propose any substantive changes to the ordinance, then we could vote to publish. Um, all right, so moving on. Um, I want to thank Ms. Vaughn for coming tonight. Uh, congratulations on the contract, and uh, it's good to get an update on your moving forward. I'm glad to hear that the folks in the surrounding area are excited about things. That was welcome good news during public comment tonight, so I want to thank you for that. Um, there were some folks that showed up tonight that wanted to speak about agenda item item 8 a and of course uh, they left when they found out that we were going to take that up tonight so uh, i uh, apologize for that uh, other than that uh, if there aren't any other comments commissioners county manager mays do you have anything you want to add okay if there are no other comments or discussions this meeting is adjourned <laughs>